The city of Elk in the northeastern corner of Poland, with extensive narrow gauge and standard gauge facilities, was a natural location for a PKP preservation effort. So it's also a natural destination for rail fans. Except for two or three local passenger trains a day, there is little activity on the narrow gauge, but there is a lot to see. So let's buy a ticket and have a look. Be sure to buy a photographer's pass if you want to take pictures. Thanks to the mix of narrow gauge and standard gauge trackage here, the yard has developed into a dual gauge museum, although the emphasis is on 750 millimeter narrow gauge. Looking across the top of the hand car, we can see the standard gauge main line in the distance, and it is a very busy place with both passenger and freight service and an engine terminal. An underground passage leads between the two passenger stations. Here are two of the most common examples of modern standard gauge steam in Poland, a freight 210 and a passenger 262. We later had the pleasure of experiencing both types in action at Wolsztyn. Behind these are an 1880 freight car and a big hook. But by far the biggest part of the collection is devoted to narrow gauge. During the last days of freight operation on the narrow gauge, the service was facilitated by these interchange cars. They were backed up to a standard gauge ramp, as seen here, and the standard gauge cars were pushed under them and secured for travel over the narrow gauge rails. Did I say dual gauge? How about dual gauge narrow gauge? 600 millimeter and 750 millimeter. Of course, this was laid here just for display purposes. Here we see a selection of narrow gauge steamers. A German Army locomotive from World War I. This PX48080 represents the modern superpower of Polish narrow gauge operations. We had the opportunity to ride behind one of these at Schroeder. This cute little 080, KP4 number 3760, was built in 1957. It is the engine now used for charter trips here at Elk, and we will see it under steam a little later. This narrow gauge diesel was built in Bulgaria. And here we see three generations of diesel rail coaches. This is the type used today on the local trains. This rather interesting snow plow had a built in turntable which allowed it to be turned any time, any place. And here is a more modern plow. The station agent made sure to show me this narrow gauge car, which was built in the U.S. It looks like they're getting ready for the afternoon run, so let's go down to the station. In the waiting room is a nice display of railroadiana, including uniforms and hats, ticket punches and validators, tools and Marshall Plan mementos, and Elk's communist era station sign. But now it's about train time. The normal consist for one of these trains is a diesel motor car, which can easily accommodate the local traffic and the typical handful of tourists. But much to our delight, this was not to be a normal trip, and as the trip progressed, it became progressively unique. First, a busload of British rail fans arrived, expecting to ride in an open car. While the crew was off fetching the open car, two busloads of college kids arrived with food, booze, guitars, and dogs, expecting to be taken down the line for a picnic. This necessitated another trip to the coach yard. By the time the crew returned with two more coaches, the kids had commandeered the open car intended for the Brits, and they were not about to give it up. So back to the coach yard to return one of the closed coaches and bring back another open car.
thought it was all very entertaining. But the train crew was not amused. It's a good thing they didn't have a crystal ball. Meanwhile, the Brits invited us to join them in the open car. Sipitki, the midpoint of the trip, was home for many of the commuters. It is also the site of a PKP employee summer camp, which features several vintage rail cars converted to cabins. The college crowd had chosen this as the site for their picnic, and the train crew was glad to leave the last two cars on the siding before heading out of town. Global Hobby, a British rail fan wearing a Kungus and Toltec scenic railroad cap while riding a narrow gauge train in Poland. Kalinovo, the end of the line, or so I thought. But the Brits had a different notion. Last fall they had booked through to Turovo, another seven kilometers down the line. The train crew explained that there had not been a train to Turovo in months. The Brits pointed out that their bus was waiting for them in Turovo, and they expected to be taken there. And so they were, and we went along for the ride. The train crew prudently loaded everyone into the coach and left the open car behind. <laughs> 